Good day, and welcome to this month's episode of Diversity Speaks, True Talk with Terry. I'm Terry Howard, Associate Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at Herzing University. At Herzing, we believe that diversity, equity, and inclusion are a living, breathing part of who we are and what we do. We've created this series in part because we wanted to create a forum for civil discourse. We won't always agree, but let's speak our truths in a way where we can listen, learn, and as a result, grow. And there's a lot of questions out there around topics related to diversity and inclusion. We hope to shed light on some of those topics and leave you with something to think about. True Talk is about taking the time to really understand everyone. So let's get talking and speak our truths. Today's topic is the LGBTQ workforce is here. And as I prepared for this episode, I was reminded of my Uncle Earl, who I lovingly referred to as simply Uncle. He lived with us from the time I was born until the day he died. My uncle was a great cook, he loved movies, and he was a gay black man. I say that because I don't think he could really be his authentic self. I say that because I was often teased when he took me to school, with terrible chants of Earl the Pearl who acts like a girl. I often think about how tortured he must have felt, being black and gay in America. My mother once cried as she spoke about her inability to help her brother in a society that neither understood nor embraced differences. Why can't people just be kind, she'd say. This coming from a woman who survived Jim Crow. I also think, however, how the world has truly changed since those days. Not only has the LGBTQ community come out, but they've demonstrated that they are a force to be reckoned with, both in and out of the workplace. This is my truth. So why is this a topic of discussion? First, a whopping 46% of LGBTQ employees don't even come out in the workplace. This means we have colleagues that are not even comfortable bringing their authentic selves to work. And that's not all. Here's what we know from the literature and research. One in five LGBTQ workers have reported being told or had coworkers imply that they should dress in a more feminine or masculine manner. 53% of these workers also report hearing jokes about lesbian or gay people at least once in a while at work. 31% say they have felt unhappy or even depressed at work. And the top reason why LGBTQ workers don't report negative comments they hear, either to a supervisor or human resources, is because they don't think anything will be done about it. And they don't want to hurt their relationships with coworkers. But here's the good news. Corporations and organizations are doing their part. Many have shown public gestures of support. They are increasingly making business critical decisions around recruitment practices, employee resource groups, and marketing that embrace the LGBTQ population. Now, despite these visible signs of progress, many challenges still persist. Likewise, a growing business case for inclusion has not yet translated into solid gains for this community within the workplace itself. Research continues to show that stress increases when a person experiences onlyness or being the only one on a team or in a meeting with their given gender identity, sexual orientation, or even race. Employees who face onlyness across multiple dimensions face even more pressure to perform. So what do we do? 
Our guest today knows what employees and employers can do to bridge the gap. Today, we have Jason Ray, president of the Wisconsin LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce, an organization of more than 600 LGBTQ-owned and allied businesses from around the state. Jason is an active community volunteer and currently serves on the board of Visit Milwaukee, the Milwaukee Chamber Theater, and the Southeast Wisconsin Professional Baseball Park District. We've talked already about some staggering statistics with respect to LGBTQ employees not feeling like they can bring their authentic self to work. What can employers do? Or what have you seen them doing already to address this concept of onlyness? Welcome, Jason, and thank you for shedding some light on this topic. Well, I'm excited to be here, Terry. Thanks so much for the invitation. Absolutely. Uh, we've talked already about some staggering statistics, really, uh, with respect to LGBTQ employees not feeling like they can bring their whole self to work. Uh, what can employers do, or what have you seen them doing already, to address this concept of onlyness? Absolutely. It's a really great question. I think it's a really important one. You know, there was a lot of talk after marriage equality came down that, well, now, you know, everything is great and everyone has equal rights. And there still is a really long ways to go until we have full lived equality for LGBTQ people. And that includes uh, in the workplace. We do want people to feel as though uh, they can bring their, their full and best self uh, to work. And I think there are a number of ways that companies can do that. It's making sure that the policies they have in place uh, are inclusive of all individuals. Uh, that includes making sure that uh, trans individuals um, are covered in their policies, uh, looking at uh, their forms, uh, and are their forms inclusive? Do they ask about pronouns? Do they uh, engage that way? There's a, it's a whole variety of things that companies can do, and really, you know, it's a, it's a journey uh, when it comes to that. It isn't just, here's the three steps and it's done. It's a continual journey that companies need to engage in to really build that welcoming and inclusive environment where their employees can bring their, their best and best self to work. That makes sense. And forgive me for not asking what your preferred pronoun is. No, it's uh, I am uh, Jason, he, him, his. Thank you very much. I'm Terry Howard, she or her. Um, can you also talk to me a little bit about what employees can do uh, in the workplace? So we've talked really about the building of the culture, but what can employees do as a colleague, right? Uh, in the workplace to make folks feel included? I think first and foremost, we, we just kind of touched on pronouns, making sure you're asking your colleagues, what are their pronouns? Uh, and then most importantly, once you ask them, addressing them by that. Uh, I think it's making sure that you're using non-gendered language as well and not assuming someone's gender identity just because of their appearance. And one simple way, you know, a colleague can do that is you know, if you walk into a room or now in this virtual space, if you're on a, on a Zoom, instead of saying, you know, hey guys, welcome to the meeting, but starting with, you know, hey folks, or just hey everyone, and making sure that they are really working uh, to create that sense of inclusivity uh, amongst themselves just by watching uh, language. It's one of the simplest things we can do, but has some of the biggest impact. I think you're absolutely right. Simple, but profound, right? Absolutely. It right. doesn't have to be these big grand gestures and grand things. It's really just about treating people. It's, I, I actually like to use, um, you know, we talk often about the golden rule and I actually talk about the platinum rule. It's not about treating others as you want to be treated. It's treating others as they want to be treated. And that's, I think the most important thing uh, employees and employers can do is treat others as they want to be treated. Excellent. Um, so, Jason, uh, some of our viewers have questions that uh, they wanted to ask. So do you mind them chiming in and asking some questions of you as well? Would love to. Great. That's a really great question. And I think it really depends a lot on uh, the individual and the relationship that you have. You know, I often encourage folks not to assume that just because you're the LGBTQ person uh, that you are the spokesperson for the entire community. So you want to think throughout 
the relationship you have with that individual, um, I encourage you to do some reading beforehand um, and figure out what you really want to know and understand. Uh, but then I really think it is about just being vulnerable and admitting, saying, hey, I've got some questions I don't understand. Can you help me? Uh, and that vulnerability goes a long way. Um, again, uh, what you're saying sounds so simple, but can have meaningful consequences. Thanks. And our next uh, viewer has another question. Absolutely. We work with one of our programs at the Chambers, our LGBT Workplace Alliance, which connects about 45 uh, employee resource groups uh, across Wisconsin. And we've got a number of amazing allies who are a part of those organizations who are helping to push for positive change uh, within their company and build that more welcoming and inclusive space. We are a community about acceptance of all, and we welcome all allies uh, to the table to be part of that movement towards full equality. Excellent. Our next viewer. It's a really great question. I think there are some real simple things, such as making sure your uh, policies are up to date with non-gendered language, looking at your forms, uh, including pronouns and email signatures. But I think it can also go beyond that. And it's supporting LGBT employee or business resource groups. It's making sure that uh, you are spending with LGBTQ suppliers in your supply chain and really diversifying your spend. Um, it's about marketing and outreach uh, to the community, uh, engaging nonprofits that way. There's a lot that companies can really do uh, to really build that inclusive, inclusive space. That's fabulous. Uh, thank you so much, Jason, for speaking your truth and inspiring us to all be better. Thanks so much for having me. In addition to the awesome suggestions that Jason mentioned, leaders should take steps to make the workplace more comfortable. They should set a meaningful public example. They should refer to LGBTQ relationships in the same way they refer to other relationships. They should display visible symbols of support and encourage employees to do the same they should display visible symbols of support and encourage employees to do the same. Make your public commitment tangible, even financial, and educate your team. Setting an example is important, but education can help ensure that your LGBTQ commitment is lived throughout the organization. That's our truth. And that's our show for today. Be well and see you next time.